that's lost his smile. He enjoys it. He's going out there relaxed and. Well, that's the first thing. When I talked to David Morris, who's right there in that white uh, collared shirt next to Mac, a nice deep ball here. Is that Smitty? That's Devontae. Yep. It's a little bit to what Kyle Shanahan wants at the position in that I'm going to be able to dial up matchups oh, there's and plays. Speed. And Smith, yeah. he's, he's got a little different gear than <laughs> when you get yeah, down What is going on guys? Today we're back with another video. This one post see free agency mock draft. This one is probably gonna be my bar by far my best mock draft so far. I've done a lot. Uh, I've only post I've only posted one so far. This one's gonna be a lot better than my first one for a couple of reasons. One, because there was a huge trade huge huge three team trade, of course. Well it was basically a two parter. Either way, a lot of moves, a lot of things. Please like and subscribe for more and share this video to your friends so they can see a mock draft and see if, who their favorite team is going to like. If they don't like the NFL, then okay. It's Of course, it's always a fun NFL. We're hanging around here for 17 games, starting off with three in August. Yes, the preseason is now three games. Either way, first pick, maybe the most obvious first pick ever. If they don't take him, uh, there's something wrong with the GM of the Jaguars. Either way. This one's very debatable, but I'm actually going Zach Wilson. My last re my my last mock draft, I said that Zach Wilson wasn't going to go to, and they were going to draft an Sewell. I still stand by that, but here's the thing: they're going to try to trade Sam Darnold because Zach Wilson is a very good quarterback. He's not once in a lifetime like Trevor Lawrence. But here's the thing: the Jets haven't had a quarterback that makes the progressions that Zach Wilson does. Yeah, Zach Wilson, he's not the type of quarterback who's going to be sitting in the pocket every play throwing dimes. But the guy, it doesn't turn over the ball often like Sam Darnold does. But there's reasons for that. Sam Darnold turns it over countless times. I, I, I'll do a video on that if you want me to. Comment section below if you think I should do a video on why Sam Darnold does not so many intercept turnovers. And just want to say, yeah, I guess you could call it a strong opinion in sports. Zach Schaumler, great guy. He's very, very good. He's he, the, his stuff is really good. I just want to say that. It's Zach Schaumler of Strong Opinion Shorts Sports. Go subscribe over there. Either way, Zach Wilson, I think, is going to go up to, to the Jets. They, it's probably not the best team move, but they need a quarterback that is – they basically need a fresh start. Here's the most interesting one. Mac Jones at 3 to the Niners. Here's why. Niners seem like they're going to draft the QB, because if they don't, they already said a couple times, many times, they're going to draft the quarterback. Kyle Shanahan and the GM of the, their, their GM, the assistant GM went to the Justin Fields, but this one, the Kyle Shanahan and the GM, the main, like main GM, went to Tuscaloosa to see Mac Jones play, and he was very good. Couple couple misses, but otherwise he was amazing. And good chance he's going to three. Fits the system very well. One of the only systems I can think that he can really fit in and excel in. So that's very good for the Niners. Kyle Pitts to the Falcons. And here's why. The Falcons might have Julio Jones. Remember, he's 30. He's still top five. Still think he's a top five receiver. He's 30 years old, though. I think he's 31, whatever. Julio Jones is getting up there in age. He's still very good, but they need a guy who can stretch the field and get a lot of touchdowns. Yeah, Cal yeah Calvin Ridley, definitely. Calvin Ridley still has some issues. Yeah, he's still he's an amazing receiver, but Calvin Ridley has some issues with his some drops and there's other things. But if you think Hay Hayden Hurst, he wasn't great. Matt Matt Ryan kind of struggled last year. Here's the reason. He didn't have a guy who was getting him those touchdowns, and Kyle Pitts will do that. He will be the guy they can just throw it up to. Julio Jones is still that, but he will be, Kyle, unless Kyle Pitts, barring an injury, Kyle Pitts will be amazing next year, in my opinion. So it depends, whatever. That's why I'm, I'm going at four to the Falcons. That may not happen. Who the heck knows? Either way, Panay Sewell, it's pretty obvious. They need an offensive tackle. 
Good chance he's going left. Jo Jonah Williams can play right. He has very health issues and stuff. Either way, Jonah Williams and in this now this mock draft, Penny Sewell. I think it's a great combination, and they should be two young studs for the next uh, ten years at least. Let's hope. And at number six, it was traded. We got Jamar Chase, who honestly. The Niners weren't trading to get a receiver, which it, the Dolphins should be happy for. They didn't have to, they actually got to trade down and got value picks to get the guy they wanted, and that's Jamar Chase. He's basically a better jump ball receiver than Devontae Smith. He's and he's probably the one you'd want over Jalen Waddle. He's basically the le the least risky out of all of these guys. He has he's probably not as high of a reward as Jalen Waddle or Devontae Smith, but and G might not have the explosiveness or close to the explosiveness of Jalen Waddle, but he's he hasn't his durability is much better. Devontae Smith's like really skinny, and he can make the uh and he gets separation and is a jump ball receiver. That's the good news. So the Dolphins are getting a great receiver jump ball to get the ball and get it for Tua because Tua will not be able to be Patrick Mahomes. Let me just say that. Seven. This is probably one of the most interesting picks, but. The Lions are going to most likely draft wide receiver Devontae Smith. Yeah, you might be Jalen Reeves Maven, uh, Jelani Tavai, Jamie Collins. Not great linebackers. Yeah, you got a washed up guy in Jamie Collins. Jelani Tavai, who is slow as you can talk. And Jalen Reeves Maven, who's like, eh. They shouldn't draft the linebacker here because they need a receiver. Tyrell Williams and who else was it? Oh, yeah, I, I can name another receiver. Either way. My, my brain just dropped. Tyrell Williams is not a number one receiver. You could, Maybe you could say he was a number one receiver. I'm just going to check their depth chart because I have all these papers of their depth chart. These depth charts because I was tracking free agency for a couple of Either way, Lions, Tyrell Williams, Rashad Perryman, and Victor Bolden are their top three receivers. That's not going to get it done. Devontae Smith. As if he gets hurt and he gets knocked around, but which could very well happen, he could be a huge bust. But here's the thing. Jared Goff needs a receiver to stretch the field. They have they have a couple guys you can stretch the field there. Jared Goff will not be good in Detroit. Unless he has receivers and they run a lot of play action and get handed off the DeAndre Swift. Honestly, he probably he's definitely doesn't have as good as line but he has a better he, honestly he's a two great offensive really good offensive lineman in Detroit as long as Devontae Smith is able to stretch the field which I think he will if this happens the they just need a deep threat Tyra Williams yeah he's a deep threat he's just not as explosive or he's not I want to say explosive he's honestly Stephon Diggs is basically Devontae Smith they're like they're very comparable but here's the difference Devontae Smith's smaller and skinnier Devontae Smith needs to make sure he doesn't get hit because if he's a smart receiver, he can be one of the best in the league. I'm just saying that. And he won't be the guy jumping up the balls because Jared Goff will not be throwing a ton of great balls. That's just who he is. Now, eight Panthers are going to be taking Trey Lance. Here's why. They need a guy to support Christian McCaffrey. And when you look at their receiving core, it's two deep threats. DJ Moore, David, well, actually three, and Robbie Anderson. And DJ Moore, David Moore, and Robbie Anderson. Trey Lance, honestly, I think you could say he struggles with sh uh, short accuracy. His deep ball is very good. I have to admit that. He overshoots guys sometimes, but he has three deep threats. This is the perfect fit. You're going to want to run read options with him, hand the ball off to McCaffrey, and Trey Lance, if there's nothing open deep, he needs to be able to check down to his running back. This is the best system, I think. This is probably the perfect match for Trey Lance. He has three weapons in deep threats, and most of all, a great running back, one of the best receiving receiving backs, three uh, whatever, three what did he? I wouldn't call him a power. Either way, he's basically you call him a three-tool running back or five-tool baseball player. He's basically a three-tool running back. If you were able to use him that way, it's gonna be really tough for teams to stop this explosive offense. Nine, Caleb Farley. So yeah, you might think why Caleb Farley and not Patrick Sertan? So. They have one really good corner. So, their best corner, or only really good corner right now, is 
known as Bryce Callahan. And Bryce Callahan is a very good corner. And he's a boundary corner. Yeah, you might be thinking he's a good he's good on the outside, but what about the other side? Michael Oldrumbia, I can't even say the guy's name right, he's not very good. What is that? They need a good another outside corner. He's not gonna be the number one guy, but the can Patrick Sertan's gonna be match ma is gonna want to be matched up on number one guy. And here's the thing. Caleb Farley will be able to step in that number two corner role and really help them. They just, the thing is, they already have a number one corner in Bryce Callahan. They don't need two number one corners because then that's how it gets mixed up. And Caleb Farley, as you know, is he, he can play in the slot too. That's good. Not as good as the next guy who's going to go, which is, of course, Patrick Sertan. I just think he's a better fit on the Broncos than he would be on any other team. The Broncos got a good scheme fit there. Either way, 10, Patrick Sertan, and here's why. They need a number one secondary player that can just boost them up. Yeah, Keanu O'Neal. I think it was DeMonte KZ they signed too. Either way, Keanu O'Neal, good secondary player, but he's really run support. That's the thing. And if he has trouble saying all these, Patrick, Patrick Sertan can really help out the secondary and make it turn into that defense they were. Their run defense is still trash. Let's hope they can fix that up. But the Cowboys, if they have a corner like Patrick Sertan, shut down those number ones, no one is going to be score. No, like, DK Metcalf has to be shut down by Patrick Sertan. Sertan I'll just got to say that. So the 11th pick, I have the Giants taking Rashad, Rashawn Slater. And you might be thinking, well, don't they have... Isaiah Thomas, Isaiah Thomas, so far in his career, has been, a, I won't say a bust, but he's been very underwhelming. And Matt Pert, no offense to him, I love him. G UConn Huskies, he's not great. They need, a, they need an offensive lineman that can really help. He can be, honestly, Rashawn Slater can, you could probably put him at guard. Yeah, you're, they don't have a great offensive line, or even, they actually have a very terrible offensive line. Nate Solder is going to be back. He should be at left tackle. He's not great, but he's okay. Matt Pert, honestly, he should stay there. You might put you might put Isaiah Thomas as a rotation guy. Fourth pick, not a great pick. Rashawn Slater will you can put him anywhere on the offensive line besides center. Maybe even center. Who the heck knows? And he will help them have a better offensive line and boost protection for Daniel Jones. And with the twelfth selection, Eagles are taking Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle is the most explosive receiver I've seen on film. I have only watched film for two years, for a while. I haven't watched a ton of film on the past couple drafts, but Jalen Waddle is so explosive. Yeah, you're like, injury concerns, injury concerns, injury concerns. You got a point. The dude's so explosive. And Eagles, yeah, Jalen Rager, they got a guy who can catch the ball, Jalen Waddle. Jalen Waddle will really, really, really help Jalen Hurts move the ball downfield, and they don't have to run it every play, which would not work at all. <laughs> Chargers, this is a tough one. I think they're going to be taking Elijah Vera Tucker. And here's why. Yeah, you might think Corey Lindsley had a great year. I have to admit, yeah, he did have a great year. But it's the only bad thing is, Corey Lindsay is in the whole interior. Trey Turner's gone. He didn't have a great year. Brian Bulaga is good on the edge. Sam Tevy's eh, if you want to call him that. Forrest Lamp is a decent offensive lineman. He's not great. Is Dan Feeney still on the team? I don't know. Either way, they don't have a guard that is half decent. You could say Forrest Lamp is, but they need a guard that can shut down with Corey Lindsay. No one will be getting on the interior of the Chargers, if they have Elijah Bear Tucker and Corey Lindsay on the inside, it'll be really tough to get by those two. And if they double team guys like Miles Garrett, if I don't know if they're gonna play, but if they do, they can double team Miles Garrett, or you can have Brian Bulaki, you can do so many things with Elijah Bear Tucker and make sure that guys don't go kill Justin Herbert. And it's a really good move. They don't need anyone on offense. You honestly, they do need a tight end really badly, but. In the end, 
I think they made a good choice there. Next pick, I have the Vikings taking Christian Derisaw. They need they need a tackle. Riley Reef was decent. She's not great. Brian O'Neill's a good tackle. You can honestly, honestly, you want to know what they should do? The Vikings should move Christian Derisaw inside. Because, no offense, Dakota Dozer was probably the worst guard in the league last season. And if, if you want to say something even more shocking, Garrett Bradbury suffered because of it. Either way, Christian Darius saw a good pick. That's why I, I, they need an offensive line. I think they got him. Inside pressure really got on Kirk Cousins last year. And I think that's going to really help. Now, here's the shocking move. So, you know how I said that those guys were going to go? Justin Fields won't go until 15. Here's why. None of the teams need a quarterback. Yeah, you could argue the Vikings. They don't really need a quarterback. Her cousin had a great seat, a, re, a re, relatively good season last year. I think the Pats are taking Justin Fields. It might not, it's probably not going to happen, but they do need a quarterback. You cannot deny that they do need a quarterback. Quarterback, and they filled almost all their holes. Maybe off, like their offensive line is. Oh my God, it's really good. They have a really good offensive line. I don't want to keep jabbering. Justin Fields, the Patriots, they will get a quarterback. Cam Newton can be like a running uh, backup quarterback or something. I don't care. Justin Fields to the Patriots. And now, 16, Micah Parsons to the Cardinals. I want to see if I actually, I wrote these down. Yeah, Micah Parsons. So you could be saying Hassan Reddick, he's a pure linebacker, you could say. But here's the thing, Hassan Reddick's gone. Jordan Hicks isn't great. They do need a linebacker. Michael Parsons is the best linebacker in the draft. And going at 13, I mean 16 seems very modest, if you want to call it that. And it seems very, very, I don't want to say fluid but it's something that's going to happen because the cardinals do need a guy who can stop the run and make p plays in the passing game to make sure that the that the D cardinals defense stays steady he could be a great linebacker for them and it's going to add a michael parsons out of penn state this is pretty pretty good chance this is going to happen either way raiders not a great defense i think they're going to take uh jok out of notre dame jeremiah wosu koromoa or Cormai, whatever you want to call him. He's a great linebacker. Some stuff, he's lacks some speed, but he's still very good. And I saw him play in that semifinal. Some Najee Harris runs were stopped short because of him. And my goodness, good pick for the Raiders. They do need a guy to support this defense. They got their linebacker of the future. Corey, L Corey Littleton was supposed to be that. He wasn't. And... Now, Michael, uh, J JOK could, is, should fill that void as they pick him with the 17th pick. 18th pick uh, by the Dolphins, Najee Harris. Their running back room is very weak, if you want to call it anything. Weak running back room. They get a running back that's very explosive. Offensive line isn't great. Austin Jackson had a decent rookie year. Jesse Davis is okay. Uh, Eric Flowers and Ted Karras. All right. I forgot who the Hector Center is. Either way. Not Ted Harris. So, their offensive line isn't great. Eric Flowers might be their best one. Probably not, though. And Najee Harris there is a de is a very good pick for them because they do need someone who, who can explode out of the backfield and get big gains so Tua doesn't have to throw 90 passes a game. And football team, I think, is taking the tackle out of... Well, whatever. The tackle out of Oklahoma State. T uh... T Tevin Jenkins. Tevin Jenkins, they need a tackle, left tackle to protect Fitz, Fitz Magic, and I think this is a very good pickup so that they have someone to protect Fitz Magic, and their offensive line is now going to be very good with Brandon Scherf, who's an all pro. I think he should be an all pro. He's great. He's very good. Pro Bowl, pro Bowl ta uh, guard. 
Brandon Scherf, Chase Rulier, Wes Martin, Wes whatever the heck the guy's name is. And yeah, good offensive. Now they have a better offensive line. It's going to really boost how they play and good. So here's the one that I think can sh surprise people. I have the Bears taking J.C. Horn. Here's why. They don't have a number one corner. They really don't. Jalen Johnson, maybe. But you can't really trust him after one year. And with a full offseason, J.C. Horn will be able maybe to step in there. They just they don't have a great cornerback room. That's the only bad thing. They just have a young, inexperienced cornerback room. J.C. Horn's going to add on to it, but if they rotate these guys on the number one, they won't have to be like, you're the you're on the number one corner the whole time. If J.C. Horn is able to practice enough, and if he has that drive, and I honestly think he needs to go to the Bears because you might think the Bears, they do need a receiver. Anthony Miller might not be there next season. They could just run the ball, honestly. They could just do that. If the Bears get this, if Bears get J.C. Horn, they will have a very good secondary. A young secondary. G Eddie Jackson can help. Maybe even take Sean Gibson Jr. Senior. Either way, this could be a great secondary if they're able to snag J.C. Horn. And I have the Colts taking, yeah, Rashad Bateman. Carson Wentz needs weapons. They're going to run the ball a lot. I know that. T.Y. Hilton, Mike, uh, Ma Michael Pittman Jr., and Zach Pascal, and I can't say in the field, Paris Campbell, aren't get, are not going to be a great receiving core. Yeah, you might think, yeah, they got a couple tight ends. You can't win a – they need a receiver that can just step up. T.Y. Hilton is uh, honestly getting older. They never great year last year. They signed him to a one-year $10 million contract. That makes sense. Rashad Bateman to the Colts seems very sensible, and I think that's that's what they're going to do. Yeah, the, the lacking pass for the Titans will be taking uh, Jalen Phillips, or Jaleen Phillips, whatever you want to call him. For this reason, he's probably the top passer from the drafts in Penis film. He's very consistent in getting to the passer, which you could say Gray Reaver, so was not. No, I don't think he's in your first round pick. Just, just spoiler. Titans need someone to get consistently. Bud Dupree giving him, like, what was it? $182 million. No, $82.5 million was not a smart move. He was around great pass rushers. They don't have great, great even good pass rushers on their team. And with uh, Julian... Uh, Julian Phillips, it, they can both feed off each other's energy and get to the quarterback and sack them. And maybe, just maybe, they'll have one of the best uh, pressure uh, percentages in the league for PFF. But I doubt. But this is a good pick because they do need edge really badly, and this is a good pick. Jets, running back, Travis Etienne, and here's why. The Jets need a running back. That's ex They need an explosive running back. What did you say? Explosive playmaker. They don't have one. Corey Davis, you could argue. They just don't have someone who can just blaze through. If you could say, they have, when they got Le'Veon Bell, I'm like, great pickup. He did nothing. He was bad. Like, just bad. And they'll be getting one in Travis Etienne because he can just really do things. Now, here's the breach of the draft, if you want to call it anything. Inside offensive lineman. They need in, inside offensive linemen. Why Davis, is, I think, is going to go here at Ohio State. I don't think he's deserving of this pick, even closely. But, man, just, oh, man, do they need inside offense, offensive line? They need a guy who can grind and grind and grind and just boot, boot, push forward. I don't know who that their starting running back is going to be. But whoever it is will need blocking. Their left tackle is trash, in my opinion. They don't have a good left tackle. Centers uh, is gone. They don't have a good center. Right tackle and Matt Filer is in. They probably do need a right tackle also. They David Castro is the only offensive line room. Like, that's where you get it. Wyatt Davis is going to grind, and he's going to help the, help the offense move the ball on the ground because Big Ben's getting up there in age. They can't pass it 50, 75 times like they did against the Browns. 
And with that pick, they will have an offensive lineman that can push and push and push and get the running back the yards he needs to move the, keep moving the ball. Now, the Jaguars, Aziz Oljuari, I think he's going to go here. Yeah, you might think they have Josh Allen. He's a good, he's a good edge, but Caleb on Chason was awful. Yeah, bounce back here. I don't want to count Aziz Oljuari will really help them, and most likely they will pick him because edge is a huge need there. They need someone who can get off the edge and get to the quarterback. Maybe he's not going to even get there half the time, but he's going to put pressure up there. He gets pressure. Aziz Oljuari gets pressure on the quarterback, as you see when he was playing on Jordan. Uh, Georgia. One of the craziest things when they were craziest things was when they were playing Alabama in like the third game of the season. Dan, uh, Mac Jones was actually getting pressured a little, not a ton, because ha the rest all the other games he was he wasn't even getting touched. Aziz Ojolari was getting pressure on Mac Jones, which is something that's really rare if you want to call it anything. Now. The Browns are going to trade Trayvon Mulrick, and here's why. They don't have a good safety. A good safety. Outside of uh, Trayvon Mulrick, they need three really good safeties because their cornerbacks are weak. Outside of one of the best in the league, in, uh, G uh, not Jim, Denzel Ward. Denzel Ward is great, but... Trayvon Mulrick will really help with Grant Delpit coming back after that freak injury. If you want to call it a freak injury, you can call it whatever you want. Either way. John Johnson is a very good safety. Trayvon Mulrick, ooh, he's nasty. If you have a nasty sa safety, no one's going to want to touch him. He's Tyron Matthews is a nasty safety. And I think Trayvon Mulrick is even nastier. And with the strong safety... Phil Void, the Void filled, and Jalen, uh, John Johnson the third. They now have three. They will have, honestly, they need to take them to have three really, really, really good safeties to help with the coverages of Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams or whoever the heck their second corner is going to be. It's not pretty at, at the corner, but outside of, you know, Denzel Ward. And for that reason, they really need to take Trevor Mowick. It's a little bit of a reach, but still. So here's the edge, Quiddy Pay. By far, they need him. They shouldn't pick him because who do they have when you think about it? They lost two huge ed edge pieces. Pernell McPhee gets pressure. He's basically uh, Fitz Magic. He's like a seesaw. One play, he outweighs the defender, gets pressure. He's like, wow. Next 10 snap, he's, he, isn't even, he isn't even moving. He is thrown down. Quiddy Pay will help this team get more consistent pressure. They blitz a lot. And he will get to the quarterback. Even if he's like no one's on him, he will burst up there. He's like, I'm sacking the quarterback. And he will sack the quarterback. This is a big pick for them. Yeah, you know, we're thinking, hmm, Saints, what do they need? Def defensive tackle. They lost Sheldon Rankin and Malcolm Brown. They cut Malcolm Brown because they have no money. Christian Barmore is probably the one of the best de uh, interior defensive linemen in the past, I'd say, th two drafts. If you want to compare them, yeah, probably. Christian Barmore is a, a very solid, strong D tackle for Bama. Hard to get get running, get the run on them. And with a good D tackle with Cam Jordan and I think there's Marcus, Dav Marcus Davenport. Either way, they'll be able to at least stop the uh, uh stop like at least put a little resistance on the offensive lineman. So that's good. And Packers is very interesting. I think they're taking Samuel Cosme. Samuel Cosme. You're like, who's he? Samuel Cosme, an offensive tackle. But, uh, Rick, Ricky Wagner, gone. They don't have a good tackle besides David Bakhtiari. And they, if they get Samuel Cosme, they'll have a good other tackle for Aaron Rodgers. And they'll have the best offensive line in the NFL. By far, Sammy Cosme isn't great, but he's good, and he's very talented. So that will really help how they protect Aaron Rodgers. And if they're able to protect him, it's kind of hard to beat the Packers. I'm just saying, no pressure, no nah, no points. I mean, no defense. Simple as that. Bills, Nick Bolton. I think they're going to go after him. They do need a linebacker. 
AJ Klein isn't great. He's not bad, but Nick Bolton could really help that defense, the Bills' defense, and stopping and Matt Milano not having to do everything with Tremaine Edmonds. Both get injured sometimes. Big ex extension for Matt Milano, and it'll really help them. Cause I don't Nick Bolton as long as he doesn't do anything stupid won't get injured. Like, but unless he does something stupid, like I said. And the Chiefs, this is pretty surprising, but I think it's a huge, it's a very big reach. But Creed Humphrey. Like, tackle, tackle, tackle. I'll show you the tackles they have available. Who knows? They could fall in love with Liam Eikenberg. Liam Eikenberg is not a safe pick because, here's the thing. Mahomes running around. Liam Eikenberg is not like that. Ian Boogie saw him. He wasn't doing Patrick Mahomes-like things. Yeah, he was improvising. He wasn't doing a mate. He's, he scrambled. It wasn't like he he was forced outside the pocket. Mahomes runs outside the pocket to make throws. He, he gets the defense guessing. Mo, Liam Eichenberg is not, the, is not the type of blocker who's going to be like trying to block, get guys out of there. And he's not a great pass blocker. He's a very, he's a good pass blocker. He's not a great one. Creed Humphrey is a good pass blocker, and they need that for Mahomes. And... Here's the thing. Their tackles aren't even that awful when you think about it. You're like, they have bad tackles. Joe Tooney, you could honestly put, put uh, Duvernay Tardif a tackle, and it wouldn't be awful. You could put Partoni, Duvernay Tardif out there, and they'll be fine. Either way, I'm just been a long video either way. Bucks, jo Jason Osai. Oh, we, oh, that, that's not Joseph Osai. Jason Oway, and here's why. Drafts over. Either way, I just want to say great job for the Bucks. They need to pick him because they're not going to be able to retain these guys forever. Just JPP is not going to be amazing next year. It's just going to it's that's inevitable. And Shaq Barry, huge contract. That's good, but they need someone the opposite. They they need another guy for rotation or right here. Either way, like and subscribe for more. Please watch the whole. If you watch to the end, great job because these videos are long and hard. Either way, like and subscribe for more and hope you have a good day. And please tell me in the comment section below if you think who you think your team is going to draft and tell me which team it is. Like and subscribe for more and hope you have a good day. And see you later.